Aqua going all right for everybody? Enjoy yourself. All right, great. My name is Joni Buford. I am uh, on the board here for Northeast Georgia Mountain Travel Association. And we are so happy to have with us Miss Ilka Lander. Uh, she is going to uh, be talking to us today about fortifying your future. Uh, Ilka is a serial entrepreneur with business in the fields of hospitality, martial arts, wellness, property management, wine industry, personal development, and business consulting. She has navigated many challenges and crises to uh, thrive in business and life. So passionate about conditioning, discipline, and purpose, she talks about ways to dominate our modern day uh, battles. So without further ado, we're turning it over Thank to you. you. Thank you so much. Thank no. you so much. The ladies are trickling in. I really appreciate that. That intro sounded like bullets. Like I did this, this, like I should be maybe a hundred years old when I'm not. So I did a lot of them and I like a lot of them simultaneously. So thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me talk today to you guys. Um, a lot of you do not know who I am, but hopefully that will change today. It is a conference based on Connect for Success and I'm a huge proponent that uh, relationships really build businesses and build success. So I really believe that um, you know you can do all the marketing in the world and all the advertising, but the ROI is really in the relationships you build over the years, the familiar faces, and how we help each other. I have two asks for you today. I would like to show up authentically, which means sometimes I will fumble with my words. I will definitely walk in front of the screen because I'm not used to it being there and being constricted to my little space here. And sometimes I'll pause because my brain has to catch up to my mouth. <laughs> so just know that I am showing up as my real self and sharing my real experiences with you that I have had. The second ask is that it becomes a dialogue and not a monologue. Um, I have three kids at home, so if I want to talk to blank faces, I do it at home. Because <laughs> <laughs> they just stare at me. So with further, let me grab. This is also new for me. So, um, so I was just curious when you decided to come to fortify your future. If you had any idea what you were signing up for? No, no idea. <laughs> awesome. I just knew I liked you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna unpack that, but I'd like to share a story um, to kind of get us started. So. Um, in 2010, that's me, my big <laughs> belly. <laughs> I was pregnant with our twins, Ian and Isabel. By 2010, I had already been in business at Paradise Hills for about eight years. I had left a successful career in law enforcement. I sold everything I had. I drove up to the North Georgia mountains, bought some cabin rentals, because I was gonna build this dream business of mine. So. I was 2010 pregnant with the twins, and as you can imagine, my husband convinced me to take this photo because I didn't believe how large I actually had become. <laughs> but I had a lot of mobility issues. I wasn't getting around very well. So he was gracious enough. He bought me this green recliner. It was hideous. It was like an Archie Bunker, you know, recliner. And he had brought it really close to the window so that I could see out and still see <laughs> feel like I was participating in the world around me. I could see people driving up and down from the business in the driveway. I could see our oldest, we had a six-year-old, playing in the yard. I could see the birds. I could feel like at least I was participating. So July 2010, I was sitting on my recliner, reflecting on those eight years, but I wasn't really that happy that day because this was going to be yard sale day. In 2010, I had to get all my friends, family, and employees together and put all of my, the contents of all of my cabin rentals um, up for sale. At that moment, I was $1 million in debt. I was not able to sustain the original arrangements of my real estate, and the bank had told me, it's time. No negotiation. So you can imagine, I was sitting in that chair, humiliated. I was ashamed of the failure. I was about to have children, 
How was I going to sustain that? How, was, how would that I get there? Those were what I was feeling as all my friends helped me empty out the contents. It was this day that I had to give the keys back to my dreams. I had to return what I thought was going to be my livelihood. Ten days later, I gave birth to my beautiful babies, Ian and Isabel. I was humiliated and I was living on food stamps. So these are my circumstances, particular to my experience, but I know that every single woman and man in here, and you got the one in the back. Hey. Two of us. Have had a similar situation, a crisis or a challenge in your life that brought you to a place where you were like, how did I get here and how was I going to get out of it? It may not be these particular circumstances, but we have all faced those. If you have had something similar to that, just kind of let me know if you're alive. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if you're living it now, raise it even higher. Yeah. These are hard, and they don't stop coming. But what I will tell you is at this moment, I knew that I had to figure it out. I had people relying on me, and I needed to figure out how was I going to get out of this and make something out of it. Flash forward 13 years, I have rebuilt my business. You all know it now, or some of you know it as Paradise Hills Resort. I have brought it to seven figures. I've added a spa, a wedding venue, a farm winery. We grow our own grapes. We make award-winning wines, which only a week ago, we got a gold and two silver in uh, California. We have a satellite tasting room in beautiful Blue Ridge and we're about to open a restaurant. Yeah. I've written a book about my journey and my lessons. And these now are my semi-grown, they like to believe they're grown, children, mm -hmm. and my wonderful husband and partner of 20 years. I learned that in order to get from point A to point B, you have to build that inner armory. You have to prepare yourself to get through those challenges because they're not going to stop coming. There's always going to be a crisis or a challenge that you need to navigate through. And there is a big difference. I'd like to clarify just what the difference between the crisis is and the chaos. The crisis are the things that are happening to us, the outside uncontrollable events that are happening. Chaos and despair that's how we respond to it. So we have to figure out how we can break that pattern. I've developed three different principles that I learned about how to do that. And the first sounds so simple, it's just breathe. Right? When we're in crisis, we're not only going through physiological but emotional turmoil. And we need to step back. Step out or step forward. Breathing involves breaking those patterns and unveiling the truths. Figuring out why you want what you want. What are your core values? What are you grateful for today? What do you have in your life right now, regardless of all of the turmoil around you, that you are grateful for? And then most importantly, how do you define success? How do you define the other side of this? What does that look like to you? So I'd like to take a couple minutes, because we are a smaller group in an even smaller room. <laughs> um, so I'd like you all to close your eyes. We're going to do some breathing. So just sit nice, comfortably in your seat. Uncross your legs if they're crossed, arms by your side. For a count of four, take a nice deep breath in and exhale it out. And add sound if you want. Deep breath in and exhale. Another deep breath. Exhale. 
keep breathing so I can hear sound. Breathe in. And exhale. As you keep breathing, I'm going to just talk and tell you that we only use 5% of our conscious brain. 95% lies dormant. Instinct. By doing breath work, you are activating, you are flooding your system with oxygen, and you are activating the subconscious. Another deep breath in, and exhale. And one more good one, breathe in, and exhale. Go ahead and gently open your eyes. So in this place of relaxation, I'm going to hand out this form. So remember what I said. The first principle is breathing, unveiling the truths, figuring out where you're at and where you want to go. And one of those is figuring out your core values. The core values are the things that define you. They're not the things you wish you had or you wish your husband or children had. <laughs> They're the values that drive you. And even though the circumstances in your life change, those core values don't. So if I would ask you right now to write down your two or three core values, would you be able to do it? Are you clear enough in what motivates you to do it? Can you do it? You don't have to, I won't make you show me. <laughs> so, but could you do it? Could you write that down? Oh, that takes some thought. Yeah, yeah. But think of the power you would have if you knew it like this. You yeah. could decide what you're going to engage in, what you're not going to do, who you will allow in your circle and who you won't, what that future looks like if you knew them. So I just gave you a sheet, and I will tell you, this is, um, if any of you follow Brene, Brene Brown, I can speak. Yeah, so this is a lesson that I learned from her, um, and she has a whole curriculum that's really fantastic. So um, There's a list of 100. I'm going to give you about a minute, and I'd like you to just circle the values that speak to you. The values that define you. The values that tell you who are you at your very best. When you show up and you need to be your very best, what are those values? What filter do you use to make hard decisions? You'll see a lot of them jump up at you, but some of them fold into each other. And some of them are based on how you define the words. So for me, one of my core values is authenticity. I like to be real, no sugar coating. It cre creativity folds in there for me. Uniqueness folds in there for me. Hopefully that one's on the list. Oh, it is, yeah. Um, humor folds in there for me. So many of them will fold into each other, but what is that core? And you kind of have some bunch circled. For my overthinkers, I feel the energy of overthinkers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Just look it, read it, yes or no, move on. There's a hundred. Don't overthink it. So we're just picking three, right? Just pick three? You can, yes. We, ideally, what happens is, though, you'll circle 20, 25. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. and, and that's totally normal. That's what everybody does. They circle a whole bunch and make it their own even, which is awesome. But you do. You want to pare that down. And you'll see some of them will start to, when you have your 20 and 25, some of them will start to fold into each other. And you're like, okay, I've got creativity, uniqueness, humor, <laughs> authenticity. What's the really the governing one? That would be the... Um, 
for me personally, authenticity. Another one that folds in with a lot is freedom, right? Freedom can be freedom to do what you want, freedom to be an entrepreneur, freedom of schedule, freedom of, you know, there's many definitions for each individual person. Everyone has it separate. But you do have two or three that govern you. How are we doing? Is anybody surprised? <clears throat> Was anybody able to come up with, fold them into two or three? Or do you have a whole laundry list? <laughs> it's possible. And it's something you can marinate on. For sure, I started with 30 and had to pare it down. And then I looked back, in these circumstances, it's one. In my other, you know, 10 years ago, what does that look like? And what was that common thread? And I can pull back all the way until I was a young child and go, yeah, that's why I chose this. That's why I wanted to um, pursue this as a career. Or this is why I had that type of relationship. So there's a common thing. So I'll leave you with this to work on and guide you. But it is powerful if you know what your core values are. When you are hit with crisis and you have to make decisions on how to show up and not just survive. We're not talking today about just surviving the challenge. It's taking advantage of the difficult times and showing up. When everyone else is licking their wounds, how are you going to get through it? And how are you going to win? We're going to win those battles. That is me. <laughs>